we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. We we'll bless your name, Jesus. There is no one like you. After creating us, you did not leave our destinies in the hands of our enemies. You did not give the remote control of our lives to any member of our family. You wrote our destiny and you did not hand it over to any human caretaker. I say, Lord, today we come to you, our Creator. And we plead you, our Father, please speak to our lives. Speak your word that can break rocks into pieces into our hearts. Let the heavens be open today. Let every dead spirit be quickened in this house. May your word that giveth life quicken our minds. As we live here, we will live here with a large coast. We will live here with refined destinies. We will live here with polished lives. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take over. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout hallelujah. The topic of today is... Oh Lord, enlarge my coast. Open your Bibles to First Chronicles chapter 4. We will read two verses, verses 9 and 10. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called him, called his name Jabez saying, because I bear him with sorrow. Verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine heart might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. It's my prayer for you, anybody that is listening, wherever you are, that if you have a request, there is a God that grants requests. And that God will grant your own according to his will in the name of Jesus. Amen. This man called Jabez, he was given birth to by a woman, just the way every one of us here will give you better. But his own case was different. The day this man was born, the woman passed through so much stress. Maybe the delivery was not ordinary. And because of the pain, the sorrow, the woman said, this one is too much. What kind of child is this? The woman did not go to the man of God to inquire. I remember the time Rebecca took seed of Esau and Israel, Jacob. The, the trouble in her womb was too much and she inquired of the Lord and said, what kind of children, what, what kind of child is this? And they told her, there are two nations inside of you. In the case of this woman, she did not inquire of the Lord. As she pushed with that eyes, she said, this one, your name is not happiness. Your name is not goodness. Your name is not precious. Your name is Jabez. And what is Jabez? Jabez means he makes sorrow. That means he produces sorrow. I have given birth to other children before, but I never experienced this time before. But this particular one produces sorrow. Your name shall be called Jabez. And this young man grew up with that name. Everybody called him Jabez, Jabez, Jabez. Until a day, he looked into his life. And he discovered that he was the best 
among his brethren. People were looking up to him. In his community, he was somebody to be reckoned with, especially in his family. But this man looked at himself and he discovered some things in his life that were not favorable. Before we go into that, what do we mean by cost? When you say, Lord, enlarge my cost, what do you mean? A cost is the land that is along a sea or ocean. A land that is restricted by a sea or ocean. I hope you know that water bodies are restriction to land. To enlarge is to make something bigger. Is to make something larger. And when you say, Oh Lord, enlarge my coast. It is no other thing, but the person praying this prayer is saying that, Lord, the landmark of my destiny needs to be shifted. Shift, if you have a plot of land, you will know what a landmark means. A landmark is the mark that demarcates the boundary. That shows that this is a boundary. When you say enlarge my coast, you are saying, Lord, my land, my piece of land is too tiny for me to dwell in. Enlarge it for me. And when you enlarge a coast, you shift the boundary. Praise the Lord. Remember, when you are praying this kind of prayer, you are not praying that God should create another land. But the land that has been existed before, you are saying that God shifted to another person's portion. Do you understand it? When you pray, God, I need money, I need money, I need money. You are not telling the federal government to print more notes. You are not telling the U.S. government to print more dollars. You are saying that some money in some hands of people should change hands. Praise the Lord. You are only praying that, Lord, let money change hands. Can you lift up your right hand today? And you say, oh Lord, my father. Oh, Lord, my father. May money change hands for my sake. Hand say amen. amen. And Jabez said, Lord, shift my boundary. You have finished the work of creation. But I know how you dealt with the people of Canaan. When Abraham was just an individual with a wife, just a simple family, you promised him the land that people had been occupying for centuries. Canaan, the grandson of who? Of Noah. They had been occupying that land and then God promised that land people had already been occupying to somebody else. That this land, I am going to give this land to you and to your offspring. So Jabez knew the kind of prayer he was praying. When he said, Lord, enlarge my cause. He said, Lord, dispossess some people of their property. Shift the boundary for my sake. Refine my destiny. I just need some extra decorations upon my life. Decorate me. I know I am the best among my brethren. But when I close my eyes and I look at the book, the volume of the book you have written about me, I know that some things are missing in my life. I want to tell you that there is no need. Certainly done for the good. The good is not good enough for you. What do you need to go for? I can't hear you. What do you suppose to go for? The Bible says you shall be at the top. You shall be the head. You shall not be what? You shall never be the tail. You shall not be the trunk. You shall not be the middle. You shall be the head. You shall lend to many nations. And not the type of money lending, money lenders we have today. They will go to a cooperative where they have 2% interest. Borrow from there and borrow to others at 20%. Not that type. He said, you shall lend to many nations. But you shall do what? You shall not borrow from anybody. Not even from a cooperative. That is the promise of God. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Are you in this house and you have a story that needs change? Do you need a change? A change of story. Some people come out to testify and they said, since I became serious, since I have been serious with God in this divine encounter, things have changed. May the Lord change your story. Yeah. Jabez experienced some things. Third John, verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish you above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health. Even as that so prospered, I want a prosperity of life and that of soul. So it is, and when you talk about prosperity in its, in its wholeness, you are talking about the prosperity of your soul and physical prosperity. And John said, even as your soul has started prospering, I want you to prosper too in all things. And when Jabez looked at his life, he was prospering. People wanted to be like him. But this man had to look into the computer of God and discover that everything was not okay. Do you remember the Israelites? There was a time they were going to take over the promised land. And because of the things they saw, they wanted to settle in the wilderness. Because there were lazy men among them. It came to a time and God told them, you have dwelt too long on this mountain. On the 40th year, on the first month, in the first month, on the first day, God told them, get up and take over the land. You may be in a situation now and you are happy. Because if you go to the community of blind men, if you have one eye, just one, who will be the king? And that is a local champion. In those days when the colonial masters came, the people that had primary seas, Tanza seas, they were the best. What brought about Pigeon English? Today, Pigeon English is a challenge to us. Is that not so? Though it's not a challenge because it has become the number one lingua franca in Nigeria. So it's not a blessing. It was because some local champions were interpreting simple and correct English. And then they interpret it in their local language to the people. They will not break it down. That is what it is called broken English. They will break the grammar down, break it, break it, and pass it in a way that the thing will be understood. They were the local champions of their time. But can anybody come out today with broken English? Pigeon English, I say I'm the best. Don't you worry, there are some areas you enter like it, para, all those areas. You see boys, nyanin worry language, and they will tell you I'm the best. Oh boy, you they fuck up, not be so that they nyanam. You are a local champion, go to school and see your mates. Tell yourself, I will never be a local champion. Jabez looked at his life. He said, though I am the best, I have to think and reason carefully and look at the things Jabez discovered about his life. Five things. Number one, he asked himself, why am I called Jabez? Have you ever asked yourself about the name you are answering today? Have you asked yourself? Me, when I grew up, I asked my mother. I said, mama, people tell me I am bearing a famous name. People call me Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. I used me to sing everywhere. It was that time I became embarrassed and I met my mother. Why will you call me Hosanna? And she told me, when I gave birth to you, I decided to call you this name so that whosoever calls this name will join me to thank God. So whenever you call me Hosanna, you are joining my mother to worship God. So keep calling me. Praise the Lord. And then Jabez asked himself, why am I called Jabez? And this man 
was told because you were given battle in sorrow. Oh, now that one go make you call me sorrow. If it's sweet, why well, why well, that they tie a bone for neck? If it say I don't eat the meat sweet, you can't use the bone. Do better for necklace. Let bygone be bygone, but this woman said no. I must give a name that will remind me of the sorrow I passed through because of this boy. Anything that is an emblem of sorrow in your life, I pray for you today that the God of heaven will lift it in the name of Jesus. And he knew the name, the meaning of his name. Then, secondly, he discovered that he was more honorable than his brethren. He was blessed. But look at his language. He said that you may bless me indeed. And that indeed means really, real blessing. You, so that you can bless me truly. I know you have blessed me. I am grateful. But I need true blessings. Amen. And he also discovered that God's hand was not with him enough. The hand of God was with him, but it wasn't the quantity he wanted. And he prayed. He said, Lord, keep me from evil. His life was characterized with some kind of evils. There are people here, people jealous you. That you are living in a good house. You are driving the best car in town. But evil is clinging to you so closely so tightly evil is following you everywhere you go you have secret tears if you pray this prayer today the god that answered jabez will answer you he also discovered that his life was characterized with grief i know a man called cain cain for the first time a man called cain you know cain Eh? He's still alive. Do you know him? I'm not talking about the brother of Abel. Do you know Cain? Who they watch wrestling for you? Though I know they watch again, but they watched before. Evil power is too much. May they not use evil power. Say they entertain me. Now divine cutter they watch now. Is that man wicked? Do you know his brother? What it be, brother? Person went stand, won't kill his brother. He killed, he brought wickedness. We name the follow person. No? Name. I asked some people, what's the meaning of your name? I say, I don't know. And females too is good on our love. And a tradition too. As you marry to a family, the name automatically now your own. You throw away your apparel. You don't get a new family. Is that not so? But ask, what is the meaning of this name? The man was called, he makes sorrow, and grief was following him. But when he prayed to God, the God of heaven answered him. Let's look at a few lessons from this story of Jabez. Now, but one thing I see here is that most great men, they appear on earth in a very despised way. When some great men want to appear on earth, they appear very quietly. How did Jesus appear on earth? Was it in Central Hospital? He, the father had some money to lodge an inn, to lodge in a hotel, but the place was filled up. Jesus wanted to come in a very simple and quiet way. He, he was born in a manger. There was no cradle for him. He was born in a place the shepherds feed their sheep. Where sheep are being kept. Who? See, today has been the greatest man so far. Is it not Jesus? Look at Abraham that God called. Abraham was serving idols with his father in the land of Mesopotamia. But God called him. 
Who thought Abraham would be the father of all nations? Mothers, don't write your children off. Don't ever write anybody off, no matter how we what that child looks like. Do you know Paul? Paul, Saul in the Bible, that wrote many, most of the epistles we have in the New Testament. Paul, that man was a killer. In the name of God, in the name of religion, he was persecuting Jesus. And when Jesus appeared to him, Jesus told him, you no know, see arm robbers. You no know, go join police. Go to kill arm robbers. Now me, now you they persecute. Saul, is it me, Jesus? Now you they persecute. But look at that man. And he realized and said, by the grace of God, I am what I am today. And his grace upon my head is not in vain. The grace of God is still there to deliver that child. Don't write anybody off. I saw a small boy on Facebook wearing a tattered shirt. And when I looked closely, I saw an inscription, I can be president. And I was encouraged. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Our immediate vice, uh, my immediate president, what was his story? Did he say, did you ever hear that? He said he went to school with that Sanders. Did you hear that? That is a man that had the privilege to travel all over the world. Even Buhari, our president today, what was his degree? Eh? When they said, bring your highest qualification, what did they produce? What? Now you talking. <laughs> but today, the man, has he come from Saudi Arabia? You see that? He travels anywhere in the world and they welcome him. In fact, I was reading the news today. They said the president humiliated himself. Why? You see, they said because the head of Saudi Arabia sent a governor to go and welcome him. That as a president, he's supposed to be welcomed by a president. They saw it as an insult. How many local government chairmen don't welcome you for here? Why do they travel that they know? But this is somebody, some people may have written off. I said, not this one. It's going nowhere. Tell somebody, my neighbor, my neighbor. Do, not do not look down on me. I am going somewhere. Going somewhere. If you believe me, say amen. amen. Are you here and you draw conclusions on people anyhow? Some people you say they are not going anywhere. God will sue Elijah your coast. The day when madman cried, he crazed your cure that day. The husband you said is a useless man. One day that husband, by the grace of God, will come to you and will cry at your knee in a midnight and you will know that there is power. When you write some people off, some women they will use their mouth and scatter the man everywhere. Two years later, few months later, after God finishes touching the man, the man is living a new life and people are calling your husband all sorts of names that you personally, officially gave to the man. The man has changed, but the names have not changed. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. No matter the circumstances surrounding your bed, God can still make you where he wants you to be. Do you remember the dry bones? The dry bones in the valley. They had, they had no hope again. But God said, man of God, son of man, prophesy to these bones and they will live again. Did the bones live? They lived again. God released bread after the man of God finished his own part. And he said, now you prophesy to the wind. And he prophesied. Use your tongue. This is a human being that prayed. I said, oh Lord, enlarge my cause. God looked down from heaven and said, who is that that I have blessed? That is still asking me to enlarge his cause. God looked at his family. God discovered that he was the best. And the best was still praying for enlargement. Look at the prayers of Jabez. 
He said, bless me indeed. Enlarge my coast. Let your hand be with me. Keep me from evil. Keep me from grief. Brethren, what are you settling for now? Where is your settlement in this house? Where is your settlement? Where is your settlement in this house? How many of us have good jobs here? I know a man called Jacob. God showed him his destiny that you will be a great man. The covenant of Abraham that was passed on to Isaac is going to be passed on to you. And this man said, eh, he decided to help God. Help in quotes. And he started using tricks. He tricked his brother and took away his birthright. Even where he was hiding, he started the manipulation again. But this man started using tricks in colobeying all the sheep of Laban. But the time came, this man met with the angel of the Lord and they wrestled. And in course of this wrestling, this man discovered that upon everything he had acquired, the two women, the children, the animals, the wealth, he discovered that he was not even blessed enough. And he told the angel, if you not bless me, I'm not going to do what he I will not let you go if you do not bless me. What are you settling down for? Are you having the best already? If you have the best, you can go and sleep. How do you even know what you have is the best? How do you know? What you are having now is the best. Look at Psalm 40, verse 7. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. This is the book I call the book of destiny. Before you were sent into this world, there was a book God wrote about you. If you have no destiny at all, fever will not attack you. If you have no destiny to fulfill, if there is no good thing about your tomorrow, accident will not come your way. If you don't have anything you are pursuing, witches will not come to oppress you. Because you are the best player in your time and you have the ball and the devil is threatened already because you are going to score. Not one. You will just... He knows that you are going to score and you will become the winner. That is why he's attacking you. Don't ever say, why is my own like that? I've not seen anybody asking God, why is my blessing like this? Now I answer that question. Your own is different. Your case is different. The trials you face are different because your destiny is different. Joseph suffered. He went to the prison and he said, I had a dream. I had a dream and that dream must come to pass. Even if my brothers, do you know that if it were to be some people here, throwing Joseph into a dry well, Joseph will say, instead make my enemy kill me, make I commit suicide. And right there in that dry well, he will just kill himself. But he said, the God that revealed this thing to me must bring it to pass. The man was in a waiting room, waiting for the flight, going to Egypt to take him to where he will ascend the throne. But physically, it was like a prison. But this man was resting there, meditating on his dream. If anybody tells you who you be, tell that person, I am what God says I am. You are not for nothing. You are in this world for something. And whatever thing God has prepared you to be, that is what you must be in the name of Jesus. Every girl you see is a potential mother. Every 
every girl you see is a potential housewife. Girl went be 16 years. 20 years, 18 years. Once they pay a diary, you wear a ring like this. You go call a small wife. Try her. You know, go just call a wife. You say full house wife. Full. Full house wife. Not be F O O L. F U. You say you don't fool. This one qualified to be house wife. The name does change. If you are here and you are settling down for somebody who drinks and lives any her life, you are disgracing yourself. You are a potential housewife. You are not a qualified girlfriend. Nobody should tell you, among all my girlfriends, you are the one I love most. You are insulting me. I am a qualified housewife. Don't call me a girlfriend. But if you keep yourself eight years, if you use bad luck from your own coffin, lock yourself, just one man for eight years, you are disgracing yourself. If you are here and you beg, bros, bros, give me 20 cards, you are disgracing yourself. You have two hands, you have two legs. Walk, walk, walk. Tell the Lord, Lord, I want to be frying Akara. Lord, through this Akara, bless me. And God will bless you. Elijah said, woman, what do you have? You must have something. If it is ordinary oil, if it is ordinary flour, then the Lord will release the second word. Do you believe? He said, yes, I believe. The third word, this oil shall not cease. Because you have something and you believe. Go and borrow empty cans. Praise the Lord. I don't know where you are settling down. But before we pray, listen to this scripture. Deuteronomy 1 verse 6. The Lord our God spoke unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough on this mountain. You are getting free manna, free meat, quail. You are getting water for free. And you think that is all about life? That is not all about life. You cannot be a president in that wilderness. You have to come to the city. And how do you go to the city? You have to go and possess your possession. Family not good. Husband not good. Where are you the pack go? Wife not good. You the pack leave her. <laughs> Nobody is a devil. Everybody good. Why you not use the goodness whether the person encourage yourself? May you stand for the side when good, they walk on the other side. Anything you are settling for, when life is not so good for some people, they will go and drink. I know a man who drinks whenever he's angry. Once he is angry, he will go and buy Calidon and start drinking it. He say, I'm angry. I want my mind to settle down. The drink you are taking is called hot drink. Inside of your heart, you are hot. You are taking hot drink upon your heart that is already boiling. And you said you want peace. From hell? Peace from where? Can alcohol give you peace? Somebody said, I want my mind to settle down. And as you are going to the toilet, you take Igbo, you take cigarettes. And you use it to settle your mind down. It's not settling down. In my village, when they heal wounds, eh? they heal it from inside. They don't cover it up. Don't cover your problems. Look for solution to the problem. When alcohol don't come up for your eyes, the problem is still there, they look for you. He said, don't worry. You don't drink, you don't vomit, finish. And they wait for you now, your eyes go clear.
We want to pray. Be on your feet. I don't know what you are settling there for. This Jabez was most honorable. But he said, this one is not enough. If people are praising you and you think that is the place God wants you to be, you may be lying. Ask God, God, what did you create me to be? With that, you should know where you should be. Say amen. amen. Lift up your two hands. Say, Father. Father. Reveal myself to myself. Say, my creator. Now like this, you make me. If you not be like this, show me myself. Show myself to me. And open my heart to see changes. Say amen. Amen. I know a woman, Hagar. Who does see Muslim before? Muslims. I mean original Muslims. Not be some Christians when on the waiting that they serve, they go join them. The man that gave birth to all these Boko Haram and all Qatar and all these people troubling the world. The day they gave birth to him, they gave birth to him, the woman was in sorrow and it came to a time. This woman was leaving, going back to Egypt and there was no water. This woman kept the child somewhere. And she went further and started crying. God, God, help me. I don't want this child to die before my very eyes. And God opened the eyes of this woman. In the wilderness, she saw water. And that is your prayer point. That anywhere I am, open my eyes. Let me see my living water. Maybe your blessed day around you. You they move up at that. They move up at that. You know they see her. Elijah Sabbath. He said, Go look whether you don't see whether anything they happen for the class. He go, he said, You don't see anything. He go, he said, Go again, go again. The same place. He said, This time around, I see something. Clouds like human hands. Touch your two eyes. Say, Oh Lord, my father. Oh, Lord, my father. Open this my eyes. And the eyes of my wisdom to see clearly how I can enlarge my coast in the name of Jesus. Now lift up your two hands as we pray. Father, you have released your word. If there is any darkness in this place, if there is any life, any coast, the devil had succeeded in restricting and shaming. It is written in your word. Now the Lord is spirit. And wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. By the mandate of heaven, we decree upon the lives of these your children. May your destiny be open for good in the name of Jesus. In the name of God, the Alpha and Omega. The one that opens and no man can shut. The one that shuts and no man can open. The almighty God, I decree upon your life today. Joining my faith with the men of God, our fathers in this house, we decree upon your life. Nobody will hinder your destiny. If you are willing and you are obedient, yet you are not eating the good of the land, Today, may the goodness of the Lord locate you. Yeah. As you sleep on your bed today, God will open your eyes. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.hosannadavid.com Email us at info at hosannadavid.com God bless you.